the 94th Division of the Psalter, amen. And uh, we're going to investigate that 17th verse, amen, that 17th verse. 17th verse of that 94th Psalm. It's already been read and you hear it. And I want to read it from the King James Version, but then I'm going to preach from another version. Amen? All right. Read it from the New King James Version, Psalm 94 and 17. It says, Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. But I want to read it from the Message Bible, which is a translation of the Bible in, in what they call plain English. Amen? And it reads this way. It says, if God hadn't been there for me, I never would have made it. I never would have made it. Amen? Amen. That's from the message translation. And I, I just want to preach for a little while today. Never would have made it. Amen? Amen never would have made it amen pray with me father god in the name of jesus i ask now that you would enter this place in the form of your precious holy spirit and continue to dwell with us move and have thine own way lord open the hearts and minds of this rating congregation that they might receive the word you have deposited in my spirit lord i ask now that you would bless somebody's soul today that you would cleanse them and make them whole or take me now and hide me behind the shadow of the cross that they might not see me, but Christ in me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, my, my strength and my redeemer, let the people of God join with me in saying amen. 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 Well, as we go into a new year, I, I, I don't know, have any of you considered how we made it through last year? How we just made it through? Some of y'all might have had an easy time. Some of you might have had a, a more prosperous time than others. But yeah, I'm happy to celebrate another year. Amen. Uh, for me, for me, it got a little shaky there. Down the, down down the road last year, amen. amen. For me, it got it, it got a little bumpy down the road there for me. Everything wasn't smooth and and everything uh, wasn't what wasn't a, a, a bed of roses, amen. amen. Uh, one poet said, "My life ain't no crystal stair, amen. amen. I got some boards missing on the stairs of my life. I've got some 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 nails that are sticking out and that will snag you on the staircase of my life. My life." Ain't no crystal staircase. Amen. Right. Amen. There's some problems that we all go through throughout the year. And I mean, there's some problems not only in our lives, but we've noticed that 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 uh, the last the last year and even the last three years have have uh, uh, the last two years have been trying. Amen. Right. I mean, we endured some things. We've had almost a financial meltdown that we've been trying to climb out of. Uh, for the past year, the financial markets crashed, and and Amen. some of the largest financial institutions went under, and you saw billion-dollar companies begging for money from the government, Amen, to try and and get some assistance. Yeah, even the auto dealers and newspapers started folding, and things started going under for so many people. Amen. Amen. We've seen the gas prices go up so high, we wonder how some people can afford to even drive. And every time you turn on the news, they're talking about another plant closing down. Uh, another group of people that are going to be laid off last year. And you saw new enemies from all over the place. Foreign enemies, they coming at us, and then you got terrorist attacks, and then they want to top the year off with enemies in our own country killing our children and killing our teachers and i tell you i wonder sometime how we made it amen? amen but despite all of those things that happened and all of the things that went on god saw fit to help me 
See, he didn't help uh, 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 some people the way he helped me. Because I saw some people that went through the same things that I went through, they went down. They didn't make it. But, some, but somehow, uh, somebody ought to give me an amen on that one. But somehow I made it. Amen? Uh, the same thing that I saw other people get taken down by, I made it. <laughs> the same sickness that I saw other people di didn't make it out of the hospital with, I, I made it. <laughs> the same things that went on in, 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 in financial situations, uh, uh, some people didn't make it. I mean, I saw the foreclosure sign on their houses, but I made it. Uh, somehow God blessed me. Uh, in a special way last year and without God's help I'm telling you right now I never would have made it uh, yeah 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 those of us who got some problems in last year we can talk about them now but the very fact that we're still here to talk about them is testament to the fact that we made it uh, God kept his word he said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he kept his word. See, see the fact that the grace of God uh, surrounded and strengthened us last year, God's grace placed someone by our side. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, God's grace surrounded you last year. Because see, when you needed somebody to help you, somebody came along and gave you a hand. When you got right to the point where you thought you weren't going to make it, somebody came along and gave you a hand. Amen? Uh, when you needed something and you didn't know exactly how you were going to get it, somebody came along and helped you. Uh, where do you think, who do you think sent them? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and some of us, we've been a blessing to others. We've been blessed so much that we were able to be a blessing to others. We were able to stop by and see about somebody and take care of them right at the moment when they needed somebody and didn't know where that somebody was going to come from. God, grace, not only helped us, but used us. Amen? Amen. See, 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 because God placed many of us in the right hands. I'm telling you, there's some of you that are thriving right here at Mount Carmel uh, that you wouldn't have thrived like you're thriving anywhere else. Y'all right. getting quiet. Right. Amen? Amen. You wouldn't be, be involved in the ministry that you're involved in. You wouldn't be doing the things that you're doing. But God placed you under the right mentor. God placed you under somebody who would understand your unique gifts. Amen. God placed you somewhere uh, under somebody that was there to mentor and guide you into the ministry that you needed to be in. Amen. Not somebody that just uh, the, the, just talk to you and let you go or try to get you to support this and, and then sit down and be quiet. But some somebody, God sent you and placed you and hooked you up with somebody that was able to encourage you to get into ministry. Right. Now, why would God encourage, send somebody to encourage you to get into ministry? Because God knew that that's where your blessings were coming from. Right. Amen? Amen? See, God wanted to bless you, but you see, in order to be blessed by God, you have to be in the proper place. All right. Amen? All right. You have to be in the proper place. When God blessed the Israelites, you know, he blessed them every morning. Amen? Amen. They had to come out in the morning and pick up their blessing. Amen? Amen. They had to be in the right place at the right time. Amen? Amen? They couldn't lay around until 11 o'clock. Yeah, I think I'll go out and pick me up some manna. No, they couldn't do that. They had to be in the right place at the right time. Amen? Some of you are in the right place at the right time. Amen? Some of you are in the right time, but you're in the wrong place. Some of you are in the right place, but at the wrong time. Amen? You're in the right place. If you're in the church, you're in the right place, but you're in here at the wrong time. Uh, see, see, see. God puts the church together, and a lot of us think that God puts the church together. Some of us think that God puts the church together to entertain us on Sunday morning. 
to get our spirit going on Sunday morning. And that if we come to church and we experience the singing and we do a little singing and and and, and, and we put a couple dollars in the, in the collection plate, we feel that we've served the Lord. No, you haven't served the Lord. That's 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 worshiping the Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants you to serve. See, see, service happens at another time. All right. Amen. All service right. happens at another time. Amen? Amen. You know, you, you, you want to be involved in worship, but if anybody's been sitting under the teaching here at, at, at New Mount Carmel Church, you know that you only when you want to be involved in worship, that's not enough. We're talking Amen. about a five-fold ministry. We're talking about the five purposes of God. You want to be involved in worship, evangelism, Amen. fellowship, discipleship, as well as ministry. Amen. That's a well-rounded individual and that's where your blessings come from and each time you add one of those, those purposes to your life you prioritize one of those purposes in your life god blesses you on another level because every time you move your life and your ministry to another level god blesses you on i wish somebody knew what i was talking about today i'm trying to tell you how to get your stuff i'm trying to tell you how to get your blessing amen amen because I'm tired of folks looking at me talking about my blessings. Stop looking at me talking about my blessings and do what you need to do to get your blessings. Amen. Amen. Do what you need to do to get what God has in store for you. He said, try me and see. Won't I pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it? And the Bible says that God has windows in heaven. He will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Not just one window. It didn't say God's got a window. It said God has windows. Amen. I mean, he's got all kind of blessings stuck up there in heaven waiting for you to get in line. And you know where you got to be to get your blessing from the window? You got to be under the window. Amen. And you can't catch your blessing out the window if you're standing over there across the street somewhere. You got to be lined up with the purposes of God. I'm trying to make this thing simple for everybody. Amen. You've got to be in the right place at the right, the right time. God's grace will do the rest. Amen. The 94th Psalm is, is a unique Psalm because it focuses on Israel's praise to God while they were in their wilderness journey. So they were going through hard times, but they were still praising God. Generally, David is noted as the one who wrote the majority of the psalms amen uh uh he wrote psalm 73 uh well he wrote psalm 73 and about 150 other psalms amen, amen. in the psalms and there are 50 psalms that are anonymous anonymous they don't know who wrote them they don't know where they came from. And Moses just wrote the 90th Psalm. And Psalm 72 and 127 Psalm were written by Solomon. And some were written by a guy named Asaph and others by the sons of Korah. Amen? Amen. Psalm 90 to 94 were written in Israel's 40 year wilderness trek. So while they were going through a hard time. Now, because they didn't want to follow what God had ordained for them to do uh, and what uh, God had directed Moses to tell them to do. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years instead of walking into the promised land. Yet God provided for them. He didn't just leave them out there in the wilderness. He provided for them. He gave them manna, bread from heaven in the morning. And then when they needed meat, he gave them quail. And when they were about to die of thirst, he gave them water Amen. from a rock. Amen. So he, he had them to walk around for 40 years in the wilderness, but he didn't stop blessing them. The 94th Psalm describes a time when their national, the, the national life of this group um, had reached a point where they wanted to give up. Amen. Amen. They couldn't get it together. The land of promise was close, but they couldn't seem to put their hands on it yet. It was so close they could reach out and grab it. They constantly fell into all kind of unfaithfulness and 
Some of them fell into adultery, idolatry, and some of them fell into wickedness, and it, it caused them a lot of trouble. So this psalm looks back over all the distance that they traveled, and they realized that God had chastised Israel for the way that they were living their lives. Amen? Amen. Psalm 94 and 12 uses the word chastisement, which means to train someone or to teach them a lesson. Amen? Amen. Amen. And see, the object of the, the chastisement is not to hurt you, but that you, you will rise up and you will be wiser and you will make better decisions and you will be stronger in learn, after you learn the important lesson that God has for you. Amen? Amen. See, see, in the wilderness, Israel was chastised and they learned through the suffering that they went through in that chastisement that they have to be obedient and trust God wholly with their lives. They also learned that God is not going to allow people that do them wrong to escape without right. being punished. All right. All right. If you follow the Lord, God will not let people do you wrong and then escape unpunished unless you administer the punishment yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, God said, uh, the, the Bible says, God is not my Amen. Amen. Whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He also said, vengeance is mine. Amen. I will repay. Don't you take revenge. I will pay. I know how to get them better than you know how to get them. All right. Amen. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might just cuss them out, but that ain't going to do nothing. I know how to get them. Amen. Much better than you know how to get them. You just right. let me handle them. You just pray for them. Amen. Pray for them for what's going to happen to them. The psalm, though, raises the question, who stood up for me against these wicked folk? Amen. Who took my side against the evil workers? Well, that's where verse 17 comes in. It says, if God had not been there for me, uh -huh. I never, I never would have made it. Amen? Yes. Right. I never would have made it. They, it. It's through faith in God. Israel made it through the wilderness, and it's through faith in God that many of us made it through last year. Am I right about it? Listen, I never could have made it without the Lord. I would have gave up a long time ago. Well, let me just talk about some of the ways that God helped me, and you might relate to it. Amen. God helped me just like he helped the Israelites by protecting them from their enemies. See, when Israel came out and they began their journey, they had this guy named Pharaoh, amen. Pharaoh, Ramses was his name. And, uh, and he came after them with an army yes, did. to kill them. He was seeking to kill, kill them. It was a strong army when they, when we look back, I'm telling you, you can see the many, many ways that God protected you from your enemies. I know I can. I know I've had some enemies. I know I've had some people that for no uncertain reason uh, wanted to see me fail in one way or another. But God protected me just like he protected you. Yeah. Psalm 124, two through three, uh, two, uh, verse 2 through 3, they said that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. See, you survived because God has something better for you. Amen. God has something better for you to do in 2013 than he did in 2012. Looking back, I'm happy because I, I, I know that I didn't have the strength to make it. I didn't have the strength to fight all of those battles. But I'm glad to know that I got a God that will fight my battles. Amen. And, and then you know what? We, 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 we went through some lean. Anybody went through some lean times back in 2012? Yes, Lord. Anybody got a little broke every now and then? I don't know. You got, got to put your hand up. Sometimes we get ashamed of being broke. I'm going to just put my hand up. I'm going to just put my hand up. I, 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 I went through some lean times in 2012. Amen. Went through some lean times. I, one, time I, 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 one time I poured out, I poured out a whole jar of chain. Trying to get some gas money. No, nobody don't know what I'm talking about today now, right? Uh, 
Sometimes you got so many things that fall down on you at one time and just take everything you have and then, then you got to struggle to make it to the next. Uh, ain't nobody gonna agree with me today. I know all y'all doing real good. Amen. Y'all ain't gotta y'all ain't gotta do none of that stuff I'm talking about. Amen. But I I know what it feels like to try to get ten dollars worth of quarters, amen. And 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 and, and, and to take all our change down to T D bank trying to get Y'all right. don't want to talk to me today. Uh, trying to get me some gas money to make sure I can get to, to get get to work until payday. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Amen. But I'm gonna tell you something. Even though I'm through through some lean times, I want you to know that God provided for us. Amen. God provided for us. I'm telling you, I never went hungry in 2012. I didn't go, I'm talking about going hungry. You ain't got no way to get no food for a couple of days. Amen. Amen. I never went hungry. I might not have had any money in my pocket. I might not have been able to go out to the movies. I might not have been able to go out and get a cheese steak. Amen. I might have had to eat a little bologna and cheese hey, and, right. and a can of Campbell's soup. But God provided for me all through. The, matter of fact, I don't got to like bologna and cheese and soup now. Amen. I, 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 amen. I, I done ate it so much, man. A little man ain't just a touch of mustard. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I, I done got used to eating it now. As a matter of fact, I like it now. Amen. Amen. God provided for us. Amen? Amen? He provided for us. Philippians puts it this way. But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. And folk wanted to see, we, we go down, but it seemed like every time I got a little low, God brought me back up. Amen? Amen. 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 And they, they roll their eyes. My enemies would roll their eyes. And, uh, oh, yeah. And grandma, you know how they do. Right, Tell us, right. folk, I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But that's all right. God is not. Don't don't don't. You just don't show off. Right. Amen. Amen. God doesn't mind anybody being jealous of you. Don't you feel? Don't you feel bad about your blessings? Don't you feel bad about being blessed? Amen. 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 Philippians, uh, excuse me, Psalm 23 and 5. That's what it means when it says, "Thou preparest a table." Before me, in the presence of my enemies. Amen. Amen. Folks start jumping on you, hating on you. And all. Don't you worry about that. You you keep serving the Lord, and the Lord will prepare a table for you right in their face. Amen. They got to look at you eat. They've got to look at you drive. They've got to look at you dress. They've got to look at you turn the key to your house. They've got to watch all of that. Amen. Right in the face of your enemies, God will bless you because he wants them to know that the God you serve will bless you despite what they think of you. Despite what they say about you. Despite how they try to hurt you. Amen. That's why a songwriter said we are our heavenly father's children. And he knows yes he knows, yes he knows just how much we can bear God has provided for us when we needed it most. He never let us go down but so far. And you know, if you be truthful, a lot of the stuff that you think you need, you really don't need. All right. Amen? All right. A lot of the stuff that you think you've got to have, you really don't have to have it. You just want it. Amen? Amen. And God will provide what you need. Last year, God gave you what you needed and didn't let the burdens keep you down. And then you know what? One thing I'm glad, and you ought to be glad too about, is that last year God saved us from our foolishness. God saved us from our own foolishness. I don't know about you, but I did some foolish things last year. I, I, I did a few. Amen. I had a few. I ain't going to tell y'all about it. I ain't telling y'all my business. But I, I did a few foolish things last year. Just like Israel, they made some foolish decisions and while they were going through the wilderness. And you know, when you're going through the wilderness, sometimes you get desperate. When you're going through a wilderness period, sometimes you get desperate. Amen. You're going through a hard time, sometimes 
the depression will lead you to the bed of someone that you know is a foolish decision. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lead you into the arms of someone you know don't mean you any good. Amen. When you're going through the wilderness, you'll do some foolish things with your money. You know you're supposed to be paying bills, but just to make yourself feel better, you're going to go and buy a pair of shoes. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh, you, when, you, when you're going through a wilderness period, you'll do some foolish things. What is foolishness? Well, Proverbs uh, 19 and 3 puts it this way. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Foolishness is when you do the opposite of what God tells you to do. Amen? That's foolishness. Now, the world may call some of you that serve the Lord. The Bible says the world will call some of you that serve the Lord foolishness. As a matter of fact, the Word of God says that the gospel is foolishness to those that are about to perish. Amen. In other words, those that are going down to hell, the gospel itself is foolishness to them. But see, foolishness for us as Christians is doing what God has told us not to do. Amen? Amen? And I've done some foolish things. Some of us, you know, we went out and we, we gambled like crazy last year. And we still broke. Fool. Oh. <laughs> some of us went and got into relationships that we know we shouldn't have got into. And we end up getting hurt. Everybody tried to tell us we still did it. Fool. Oh. Some of us opened up our mouths at the wrong time, and you know it was the wrong thing to do and the wrong thing to say, but you still open your mouth and make your fool. Oh. Amen. You do some foolish stuff yes. when you're going through wilderness. You'll cut off relationships that you should be building up. A folk will try to help you, and, and you'll, you'll do them wrong. Amen? Amen. We know that is foolishness to engage in all of this stuff. Amen? Amen? We know it's foolishness. We know it's foolishness to get involved in criminal activity. We know it's foolishness for us to cheat on our spouses, on our husbands, on our wives. We know it's foolishness, but we do it anyway. Amen? Amen? Amen. Somebody did it anyway in 2012. Get all through all of our foolishness, God never left us. He didn't embrace our foolishness now. God is not going to get involved in your mess. But he didn't leave you and he didn't forsake you. Amen? Last year he saved a lot of us fools. Saved a lot of us fools from our own foolish mess. And without his mercy and his grace, we wouldn't have made it. But brothers and sisters, listen, you got to think about the fact that we made it last year by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. The grace of God looked down on my mess and continued to bless me. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy about that thing. The grace of God showered opportunities on me, even though I didn't deserve it. God is not foolish. God is not mocked. Don't think he don't know what's going on. He's not naive about what you've been doing, and what you haven't been doing, but there's a reason why he keeps blessing us. See, his grace has a divine purpose. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? We made it through the trouble and the trials of last year because there's a divine plan at work in our lives. Those who know the Lord have risen from last year's struggle. <laughs> but if somebody asks you, I know you'd be able to tell them that I'm stronger. I'm wiser. 
and I'm better than I was before I went through it. <laughs> it hurt me, but you know what? I, I know I can take it now. <laughs> I know I'm strong enough to make it through the fire and to make it through the flood. <laughs> that might have been the divine plan in the first place. <laughs> you should have learned to trust God more and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will give you rest. <laughs> you should have learned to pray before you acted and seek God's will. You should have learned that in our weakness, our God is still strong. You should have learned uh, that, uh, you know, last year, that it wasn't by luck that you got through, but it was the hand of God all over you. Now we're going into a new year, stronger, wiser, and better than we were before. Now, since we overcome the slippery slopes, uh, we came down through last year. We're better at this year, prepared to serve God in the fullness of our power in the year to come. Now, faces in the new year, you should be encouraged to know that the same God who saw you through last year is still on the throne.